Thank you for watching this video on the scheduling software that we've made uh, for our painting company and hopefully it can work for your company as well. I know there's a lot of different scheduling softwares out there uh, with different features. This is a fairly simple, straightforward uh, software to just let us know how far out our crews are um, and give our crews and employees the uh, necessary information uh, in order for them to get the job done. So um, I'll just show you what it looks like on our end and then this is the sheet that you'll receive and you'll download and you'll have to start working off of but I'll show you what it looks like with a fully functional sheet. Um, so here we have our crew schedule. This is for our employees down below. Uh, we have also subcontractors that we keep schedules for. So we have this subcontractor, we have this subcontractor, um, and more subcontractors that we use less frequently. And then we also have our customer schedule. This is a feature not everybody might want to use. We use it every time um, we work with a client. We send them a link to our schedule so they can track our progress because this gets updated daily. Um, but I'll get into that more in a little bit later. Um, so on this first part, you know, you can do what, whatever you want with these links. You know, this is just blacked out right now. You would have to insert a link here if you want to use it, or you can just delete that. But how to prepare for your crew. We have a document here that we give to our clients to let them know how they need to prepare for the different type of services that we offer. So we uh, offer cabinet painting, wall painting, deck staining, exterior painting, and so on. And that just kind of gives them, sets expectations, gives them a heads up on what they need to do. We also have our liability insurance and workman's comp insurance. Now this columns from here over gets basically copied over to the customer schedule. So they see this information, but they don't see any of this. And uh, again, I'll get into that a little bit more later. But this red area is just kind of like miscellaneous things that the our employees or admin people might need. So we have our operations payroll here. We have our testing area, so we do have a training module for all of our employees where there's videos and they have to take tests and pass certain areas before they're able to kind of get in the field. Um, we have our review link for a Google page. We have uh, our RRP certificate, our Slack invitation, our vehicle insurance. So if one of our guys were to get pulled over, they can show... Uh, the police officer vehicle uh, insurance information, W-9 form, late fine, quick estimate. Some of these things you may or may not have available to you, but whatever you can put on the schedule, because I mean the schedule is what we use every single day. We probably use this application um, more than, if not the same amount as our piece rate payouts, um, which is an, another video and another application you can purchase if you like. But how this works down below here is we have an accepted area. So I'm the salesperson for my company. I go out and do a sale. And if the customer accepts it, I put it into the accepted pile right here. And I basically just copy one of these rows, copy and paste it over here, and then alter it as I need to uh, for that specific client. Um, so basically, it's just the customer's name, the estimated project days, um, and this can change a little bit depending on how many crew members you have out there. But if uh, you know if our average crew size is three people, then I know that if it's bid for about 120 hours, you know it's probably about a week of work, so it'd be about five days. Uh, the tribe type is exterior painting, color status. Uh, we still need the color. We still need the deposit to be received by the client before we start the job. This is the work order link. Now we use PEP Cloud for our estimating and it also creates work orders. So this would be the work order for the crew so that they have the customer's address, phone number, all that information to be able to go out to the client's house. It has the color information here, the products that we'll be using, this, the process that we're going to go through. You know, this is kind of more in line of, of using PepCloud, which is a, kind of a separate uh, software altogether. But we use that and we paste the work order links right here. And then we have job media. So we always take videos of our job sites. Videos are pictures so that the crew know, kind of knows what they're getting into. And so the project manager kind of has a heads up 
So our salesperson, myself, would go out there and take a video. After I talk with the client, it's usually about four or five minutes, and then it gets automatically uploaded to Google Photos, uh, which is a free service. And basically, my iPad will just upload a video the second that I get in Wi-Fi range. And then once it's uploaded, I'll just uh, grab the link. So if I go over to Google Photos, I'll do it real quick. I can just grab the link here. So this is a video I took um, on Friday. Click that, uh, click this icon right here and then create link, copy it. And then I would just go back over to the uh, schedule and paste it there. We have the SOP that's created uh, right before every job. So again, this is maybe something that you may or might not use. And if you don't use it, you could probably just delete this, but um, this is the SOP for Aaron storing. Um, looks like we were painting here cabinets here. So basically this is just a step-by-step -step guide on how to paint cabinets. This also has training video links in there so that if a crew member is kind of new to cabinet painting, they can reference the training videos. It also has a goal sheet here. So it says like how many hours that we're uh, trying to hit for a goal, the budgeted hours is 154. So they're trying to actually beat the budget by a considerable amount and basically it just has a step-by-step -step guide and the crew lead will use this and input what their goal for the day is, the goal hours, the actual hours, and whether or not they accomplish the goal. Um, and they'll kind of plug that all in on the first day after the first day of working the job so that they can figure out what they need to do in order to beat the budget. Um, so I'll probably make those SOPs available for any other painting contractors that might want to use them. Um, it's kind of specific to our process, so you may or may not like our processes, but uh, it works well for us. And then over here we have project manager, um, who the project manager is. So we just have the initials. So this is for Mitch. Um, project manager communication status. If I click on this link right here, it's going to say like, Zero, the customer has accepted the project, but the project acceptance email has been sent. One, initial project acceptance email has been sent. Two, one week out. Three, two days out. So we kind of know what the status, the communication is, and we always want it to be three before we start the job. Um, payout status, so we use a piece rate pay system. So I know that right now this job has been 70% paid out already, and uh, you know the remaining 30% will get paid out on the last the next pay period so this is how we keep track of our piece rate pay system so if you look at um, one of the other sheets that we have available to sell is the piece rate system and uh, this is kind of what that looks like you could watch that video if you like it's pretty in-depth it's about an hour long on how to use the piece rate system to pay your employees um, I highly suggest that it works really well for us but once it goes from this area and the crew finishes the job, then we drop it down to the recently completed. And once it's in this area, when I run payroll, I know that these jobs need to get paid out. So the commissions have to get paid out to project manager, the salesperson, and the crew working the job needs to get their piece rate payout. And once those jobs have been paid out, then we get it dropped down into the 2021 completed area down below here. And we have basically the same setup for all of our subs. Um, if you look here, this is the estimated weeks out. So that's the estimated weeks out for the last day. So from this day to the end of their vacation that they're going to take, they're 12.2 weeks out. Um, that gives me an idea of where we're at when I'm, when I'm trying to sell a job. If a customer asks how far out we are, I can look at the schedule and realize what crew is available and who's the right fit and let them know, you know, it's roughly going to be 12 to 13 weeks out. On the customer side of things, we have a macro setup where every single hour or every single day at night, it will copy this column and basically paste it over to the customer schedule. So how we utilize this is we have an email set up to the client. So we, I'm over in Zoho. This is our CRM software, but I would send this client an email. Say they accepted it. The project manager just put it on someone's schedule. They're going to send 
an introduction email um, where they just basically introduce themselves. And so it'd be first contract, first contact introduction. And uh, it has the scheduling link right here for, um, for the client to view. So they can click on this link, they would see their name and they would know roughly how far out they are. Some people get a little bit confused about the 12.2. Like if they're right here, they think to themselves they're 12.2. So for that reason, we also have um, a video right here, just kind of explaining real quick. It's just a screenshot like I'm doing right now, um, explaining how to view the schedule and, and uh, so people aren't confused. And we just have the general preparation guide right here so people have a, a heads up right away. We like to get that information to the client multiple times. So it's the same thing as how to prepare for your crew. Assuming they don't see that or click that link, we also have it um, right there, which is this, the same document. So if we're on that customer schedule and we want, and you're trying to set up an email template that you're gonna send out to a client, you know, just like this, um, you're going to want to click file, share, publish to the web. You don't want to share the entire document. You want to just share the customer schedule. So we have a customer schedule for each crew. So the, this would be the customer schedule for the employee crew. And then this is the customer schedule for uh, our subcontractor, uh, Alfredo. You would have a customer schedule for each type of like basically entity. So you have one for employees and then for each one of your uh, each one of your subcontractors. So if you were to set up multiple crews in here, you would have to set up multiple macros where it's automatically copying and pasting um, the daily schedule. And then you're gonna wanna create a link and then you know put it into your email template. So we just have the two different crews basically right here. When this email gets sent out, we don't send them a copy of each crew. We just send them a copy of the schedule where they got assigned to. So if it gets assigned to a subcontractor, uh, Alfredo here, then we would just go ahead and delete this. But you just wanna make sure that when you're creating that template, you um, share just the customer schedule here and not the entire document. Because if you share the entire document, then they see everything. And it's not really, they don't, you don't wanna share all your information with them um, all the way across the board, so. You know, there's going to be kind of some sensitive information here, your SOP, your work order, um, some of the notes that we put in over here. We just wouldn't want our clients to see all that stuff. But so there's that. And then I also wanted to point out that. So let's say that we were finished with Aaron's story and you see it says 7.8 weeks out here. You just basically take that column and drop it down into the recently completed. That's what the project manager would do. And then when you do that, it drops the estimated weeks out to 7.4. You just want to kind of keep an eye on this because they, basically this formula is just the sum of 16, uh, column 16 to 18, 28, 16 to 28 here. It just adds them all up and divides by five, assuming a five day work week. Um, so you just want to make sure that you're checking this as you're adding jobs. Your project manager is just making sure that all of the uh, columns are getting added up here because you can kind of mess with the formula a little bit if you if you don't do it right. So I'll go ahead and just uh, back up there. So like Gretchen King, um, project manager would just take that job. It's been accepted. I put it onto the schedule and they see that it's it's their job to kind of get it scheduled. They would just assign it to a crew. So let's say that we were assigning it to our employee crew. They would just drop it down here at the bottom. And then they would go ahead and send that email off to the client. And then they would change this communication status to a one. You know, for the for my subcontractors, I have less links up here than I do for my employee crews. Like, uh, they don't need a vehicle insurance information, but what is important to me is keeping track of my subcontractors' insurance. So I have just basically I need to get work comp insurance, updated work comp from insurance from this subcontractor. As soon as it turns yellow, I know that it's expired. We also have a sub agreement here, the Slack invitation, W9 form, miscellaneous forms that we might need. And let's say that I add a new subcontractor, I can just take this sheet and uh, make a copy of it. I can just kind of alter it, you know, delete some of these jobs and just get it set up for a new subcontractor. And then when I'm ready to 
share it with them. So like, let's say I hire a new employee, they would just get a link to this schedule. So they don't get a copy of the actual document. They just get the published version online. So you have to go to share, publish to the web. And if I'm just doing it for employees and I just want them to have the crew schedule, I would do crew schedule here, take this link, copy it, and I would send it to them through Slack. You could text it to them as well. And then they have a copy of the schedule. I do the same exact thing with the subcontractors as well. Um, so I think that pretty much wraps up the video on our customer schedule. Uh, it works really, really well for us. We don't work with a lot of remodeling companies. We don't work with a lot of new construction. We just kind of work on a first come first serve basis. So that's probably one of the reasons why it works so effectively for us. But we have gotten a lot of feedback from clients that really like the customer schedule. It reduces the number of phone calls that we get, like how far out are we? But it also gives people a little bit of confidence just seeing their name on a list and seeing it move up. You know, they've given us a 30% deposit. So seeing that information uh, gives them peace of mind. Um, but then on, on the crew schedule side, they have everything they could possibly need here at all times. The work order information, job media, the SOP, and then they get the payout information over here. Um, so this is really the hub uh, that we use for a business. And um, so I think it's pretty good value. Um, you could pretty easily create this on your own, but I'm not gonna charge a lot of money for this sheet. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can contact me. Um, I'll put my information in uh, the description where I'm selling this uh, sheet. Uh, but thanks for watching. Please give us a like. Um, and take care.